the month of march rings in the season of lrs or liberalized remittance scheme with india's high net worth individuals looking to send money overseas to invest in real estate some buy property abroad for a better lifestyle and some actually seek out citizenship through property investments according to henley and partners in 2020 despite covid restricting global travel well the indians again topped the list of those making inquiries for residence or citizenship by investment programs today on the property show we dig deeper into what prompts the well off indians to buy property abroad and which are the cities and countries which are the most sought out for either for lifestyle or for citizenship Welcome everyone, I'm Anisha Natarajan. Joining me today are Pallavi Jakru, partner at Grant Thornton LLP, Surabhi Marwa, partner Ernst & Young India, and Akash Puri, director international at India Sotheby's International Realty. Thank you very much for joining me. Pallavi, my first question is to you. Has there been a steady increase in Indians buying real estate abroad as has been widely reported over the last five to six years? Oh, definitely, Manisha. There's been a... Uh, a distinct increase and it's driven by different reasons uh, you know one is people have started businesses have become more global so you know people wherever they set their roots as far as business is concerned they also like to buy property and I think that's a very Indian way of uh, finding your feet in any new uh, sort of jurisdiction mm -hmm. what we now increasingly find is a lot of people are buying property where their kids go for education and a lot of people are buying holiday homes now so you know clearly there is a uh, a huge uptake on Indians being interested in buying property abroad. Mm -hmm. Akash, uh, you've been dealing with Indians and uh, advising them on investing in some of the big global gateway cities of the world. According to you, what are the primary motives? I mean, is it lifestyle? Is it citizenship? Is kids' education? And sometimes people say it even makes great investment. I mean, today Dubai might be cheaper than Mumbai. That's correct, Manisha. Actually. Uh, all the reasons that you've mentioned and a bit more, you know, as a prudent financial or asset manager, uh, it is no longer uh, an aspect of, you know, it would be nice to have a home overseas, but it is now actually a very prudent decision to actually have a uh, asset which is overseas. And this basically helps in many ways, because firstly, as, as Indians, we like to have a lot of our mm, um, uh, portfolio into real estate and gold. And, and if we can geographically de-risk the real estate portfolio by buying in a blue chip city like London and New York, there's nothing like it. Along with that, you know, there is some sort of uh, capital appreciation in terms of the property value. There's a good rental yield between 2 to 3% on a yearly basis if you're buying somewhere in central. And of course, there is the play on the currency uh, and the pound and, and dollar usually get stronger uh, every year. And that basically adds the extra kicker to the investment in the real estate overseas. Hmm. Surabhi, what's your own opinion? I mean, uh, is it lifestyle? Is it investments? Or is it business and children's education? What are some of the top, what according to you is the top reason? I think uh, Pallavi and Akash have covered most of them. But I think I'll just add one more point. That's access to key markets. So sometimes, uh, you know, if you're based in one market, for example, EU, um, buying a property and therefore linking it maybe with an investment, a citizenship or a, or a visa gives you access to that market and that could be for education, that could be for businesses. It's just easier to set up corporate structures as well. Um, and also, um, you know, diversify your assets. So Akash talked about the Indians being, you know, generally more favorable, you know, sort of uh, uh, partial to real estate. So that, that is another very key um, indicator as well. So that's the only one uh, additional bit from what Pallavi and Akash said. Hmm. So real estate continues to remain pretty high in the asset classes they want to own. You know, Pallavi, there's a big hue and cry about millionaire Indians leaving the country and wanting to, you know, take permanent residencies abroad and globally. Uh, is that something which is overspoken about? Are they just doing it because it makes more sense for their businesses? Uh, so this is an interesting question you ask because, you know, one of the things we've noticed is that a lot of people want to become non-residents. They want to take permanent residency visas. They don't necessarily want to give up their citizenship of India. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's being driven by multiple reasons. Uh, you know, India has this concept of taxing your worldwide income. A lot of people who have global income are quite happy being a non-resident. Uh, you know, then, of course, there are business reasons. There are personal reasons. A lot of people want to live in an environment which is sort of 
better to breathe in, uh, you know, not just live in, but you know, they're very basic issues. I know people who kids have had asthma problems in India and they've chosen to sort of relocate abroad. Wow. Better education, better healthcare facilities. Hmm. So I think there are a lot of drivers for people to look at, you know, being non-resident Indians. People still haven't sort of uh, lost sight of the fact that India is still a great country to do business. So, uh, you know, while their anchor will be the business in India, but a lot of them will choose and are choosing uh, to become non-residents and over a period of time take permanent residency and then, you know, explore citizenship five to seven years down the road. Mm. Uh, so Akash, that is a trend that we are seeing, yeah. All right. Akash, what, uh, how difficult is it to actually get either permanent residency or citizenship uh, through investments in real estate? Actually, uh, Vanisha, over the years, it's become much simpler. And, uh, and you know, uh, we, as being part of Sadhguru International Realty, uh, assist our clients uh, to get this uh, opportunity through real estate. Uh, we're present in 75 countries. We've got 1,000 offices and close to about 24,000, you know, associates. And, uh, and through real estate, it uh, depends on how much time you want to spend it in which country to get it, or, or it depends on your time horizon, if you want to convert that into a passport. Or, or the amount of investment you want to make, it's it's fairly simple. For example, Lisbon is a hot spot, and over the last uh, in the last one year, the real estate market in Lisbon has actually the prices have moved up by six percent. Uh, so, Rubi, other top destinations. I know that uh, Lisbon, of course, has caught everyone's fancy in the last few years. But things mm. like New York and London are uh, pretty high up in the list of wealthy Indians to have a property in these kind of destinations. So Manisha, let me break this up into two. So a uh, hot destination simply for buying property, let's not link it to citizenship by investment, would be Portugal, Spain, US, UK, and Canada. They remain hot destinations for Indians. Got a lot of clients who want to go there. Uh, that's not uh, necessarily linked with citizenship by investment. U US, UK, etc. may not be. Mm -hmm. Then you have the hot categories of citizenship by investment, which is you buy a residential asset and you get a PR and then a uh, you know, and then a passport there. And right. those hot ones are Caribbean countries, and there you could invest about 350000 to $500,000 and get a citizenship in time. Uh, Turkey and Montenegro are very, very uh, hot at the moment. Again, the investment amounts are slightly lower, $250,000 as well. Uh, I've got a lot of clients asking me about Austria and also, you know, about Malta. But those two, whilst they're still hot destinations, they're not traditionally or typically citizenship by investment. Would you agree with Akash that uh, this entire route of citizenship through investments or residency through investment has over time become easier? Because I keep reading contrary reviews. For example, U.S. raised the amount that you have to invest uh, for citizenship through investment program and you had uh, you know some murmurs happening even in Europe in terms of you know they're going to probably stop the golden visa route so what's going on so um, you know US yes um, they increased the limit and the wait time for Indians has it has increased consider considerably um, that's one outlier and that you know so so let's keep US out for a moment Europe yes it's simpler and a lot of people are doing it because for HNIs, the amount that you need to invest is, is not a very, very, very huge amount at the moment in terms of, you know, of course, an HNI's pocket. And we are talking about the wealthy or, or HNI. Um, processing times have been, uh, timings have been made easier. You have a lot of companies and lawyers and others who are actively working along with real estate companies, along with tax consultants such as us to make it easier and bind it all together. Some of these popular European programs also don't need you to stay there. So, for mm. example, in Portugal, you don't need to shift lock, stock, and barrel. You can stay in India, just spend a couple of days in Portugal. There are concessional regimes for taxation of rent, etc. So, all of that bounced together has made it a little easier. And then also we have this, you know, sort of a cult, uh, um, uh, you know, personality. More, you know, and so therefore, the more people hear about their peers and friends and other promoters and H and I's doing it, the more they are, uh, you know, they they start thinking about it, talking about it, and then realizing that it's it's something that is very, very doable. Mm. So that's really what's happening. Akash, you spoke about, so that's citizenship and residency, Akash, but what about just lifestyle and investment? I mean, if I was not looking at citizenship or residency, I had the money, which would be your top picks in terms of best destinations? You spoke about Lisbon, but other than that, for a lifestyle upgrade and even returns. Sure, sure. So that's a very good question, you know, and, and keeping that aside, 
uh, the citizenship angle aside, you know, New York and London are always being top of the charts. Uh, there has been a huge amount of activity in the, in London after the announcement of you know uh, the stamp duty holiday for up, up to about five hundred thousand uh, pounds. You know there is uh, some sort of a benefit of that people are getting, and that has been extended now till June of thirty first. Uh, so a lot of people uh, look at London. In fact, just uh, last month the average price in in the UK has gone up by almost a percent for real estate mm. after the extension uh, of the stamp duty holiday. And for the first time in London, uh, in, in, in London, the average uh, price of an apartment uh, has touched 500,000 pounds. So, you know, that, that just goes to show there's so much demand for London. When one talks about New York, which is another very popular destination, and, and you know, everybody knows the most amount of millionaires per square foot live in New York. So that's really, you know, the big daddy destination when it comes to the real estate um, investment. Uh, Pallavi, big question to you. What happens now? I mean, this is this is the kind of excitement we saw continuing in 2020 when people, Indians, couldn't travel abroad, right? Now, of course, with the vaccination, you will have people beginning to travel again. Do you see 2021 probably to be the year when this will accelerate? Definitely will, and I think there'll be multiple reasons driving that. One, of course, will be, and, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, Sotheby's will <laughs> ratify that. Property prices have become very lucrative, mm. very, very attractive, especially in Europe. I mean, there are some schemes where you can come and buy for literally, you know, 100 euros, you can buy a, a house, which you can then, of course, you need to renovate and, you know, look after and all of that. Two, I think people have also realized that for a lot of us, we can work from anywhere. Mm. Right. And I think that's that's going to be another driver. And, you know, I'm, I'm very tempted to quote a line here where I think Mr. Oday Kotak mentioned somebody. He said, you know, geography has become history. <laughs> You know, and we already yes, seen that. Yes, it's a good you know, one. A lot, from a lot of people in India are actually sitting out of Goa and working. Yeah. So, you know, really, uh, Manisha, it's a question of money. I mean, why can't you be sitting in the Italian Riviera and working if you could <laughs> afford I, it? So absolutely. I, 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 definitely going to happen, as I said, for multiple reasons. It makes investment sense. Uh, from a lifestyle perspective, it makes a lot of sense. And if I can just add to what, you know, Saruvi and I had mentioned earlier, Europe, you know, if you take a buy a property in Lisbon, for example, you also get access to all of EU if you have a yeah. PR visa. If you've got the money, then the world is your play field, not India. Pallavi, Surubi and Akash, thank you very much for joining me. Extremely interesting discussion.